Here in West Texas, we have wide open spaces, the sun, wind, and you can bet that we definitely have our fair share of predators. I'm Megan with Myra Hatchery, here to tell you about predators in West Texas. First off, we have our dogs. We have two big Dutch Shepherds and a Catahoula Hound. <laughs> and these three dogs roam around freely along with our chickens. As you can see back here, we have a mobile chicken coop. So it, this actually moves around our property and our dogs also have free range to move around wherever needed. Now they're not quite like a livestock dog where they stick with the actual chickens. However, they do move around. They are great alarm systems, great warnings, and just seeing these big dogs around is normally a big enough deterrent to deter from coyotes and other dogs, which are the biggest predators that we have here in West Texas. Best part of chickens? Eggs. However, eggs attract snakes. And that is a huge problem here in West Texas. We have snakes that get eggs, and even worse than that, we have snakes that will get the baby chicks if they can get a hold of them. So the way that we fight against snakes, we can't eradicate snakes, our dogs do a very good job at alerting us when there are snakes. But the number one thing that we do to make sure that there are less snakes is try to control rodents. That means any feed that we have, any extra food that we lay out, we make sure that we only put out enough to be eaten that day so it's not left overnight, attracting any of those rodents that like to come and clean up after the chickens, especially where our feed is in the barn. We want to make sure that the, tan, the pens excuse me, are nice and tight and closed so nothing can get in there and get into the feed. For predator protection, the first place you want to start is in your coop. Here, at least in West Texas, predators can be tricky. Raccoons can open locks. A coyote is going to be ruthless and relentless when they're hungry. They're going to want these chickens. You need to make sure that every way of entry is safe. We have two ways of entries here, a human door and a chicken door. We make sure that at night, both have at least one locking mechanism. Another thing that you want to make sure is that the hardware cloth is solid and protected. We have some bigger hardware cloth on the ground of our coop as well as in the windows to help with the breeze. None of this is the chicken wire that has molded and moved. That stuff just isn't safe. Everyone, it's Jess from Meyer Hatchery and our farm is located in Northeast Ohio. So there's a couple different predators that we need to keep an eye on here on the farm. Where our farm is located, we are just a couple doors down from a wildlife preserve in a hollow. So although we get to see lots of awesome wildlife, sometimes they like to visit the chickens. The main predators we have to watch out for are raccoons, coyotes, we have the pond behind us, so mink, and we also have to watch for aerial predators such as hawks. I want to show you a few things that we do to keep our flock safe from those predators. One thing that we do to help protect a flock is we have game cameras all throughout the property. Some of the game cameras, we have to go get the SD card and check them on our computers. And some of them actually send alerts to our phone and we keep those closer to the coop. So we know if something is by the coop, especially in the middle of the night. Some of our game cameras are on trees and some of them are on these little stands here that we made. So we can move the cameras if we have a lot of predators that may be visiting. Another thing that we do on the farm is we use a lot of the night guard products. Right here is the night guard solar light. And this light blinks a red light at night and it makes the predators feel like they're prey. We've actually seen this work. I've seen coyotes get close to this light, see it, turn around and leave. Another thing that we use is the night guard tape, which looks like this here. And that is reflective and helps to keep aerial predators away from our flock. Another thing that's really important on the farm is fencing. And this coop right here is actually a movable coop. We use it kind of like a tractor. 
And I just want to point out that look how small the holes are in the fencing here. That is really important when it comes to your fencing for your coop. Nothing can get their hands through this fencing here. You want to keep that in mind when you're building your coop. You don't want to use things like chicken wire because chicken wire can be easily pulled down by predators. The next thing I want to show you, you're going to say, Jess, I can't see it. Well, it's because we buried it about three or four years ago, but underneath the coop here, there is a no dig skirt that we buried all around our chicken coop. And it is hardware cloth that we came out about 15 inches or so, and we put it along the outside of the coop. So things cannot dig into the coop from the outside. Another thing that we do to help keep our flock safe is education. We have a lot of books that we have that we have in reference to our chicken coops and our duck coops and raising our poultry. And one book that's really important and we always keep it in a place where we can easily access it is a track finder book. And there's different types of track finder books out there. There's some that are region specific. This one here is just for North, um, North America. And it's a really good reference to have. If you live somewhere where there's a lot of mud or a lot of snow, finding tracks is a little bit easier. But if you notice that there's a lot of tracks around your coop, you can take a book like this, cross-reference what that track is, and then you can come up with the appropriate way to protect your flock from whatever predator may be visiting your coop. So the last thing that we do is we make sure that there is no extra food in and around the chicken coop that can bring predators in, and we check multiple times a day to make sure that there's no food around. Lastly, we, if we have a lot of predators that are in the area, we do supervised free range. So we make sure that they have a really long run that they can play in that's protected. And when we let them out, we make sure that one of us is out here just kind of keeping an eye on them. Hi, I'm Lauren with Meyer Hatchery. Today I'm going to show you some of the things that we do for predator protection on our farm in North Georgia. We have about 70 chickens and we do free range them. So we do things a little differently than a smaller backyard flock might. The biggest predator defense that we have, at least for larger predators, is fencing. We live on 15 acres that's fully fenced and cross fenced and the chicken coop is inside of the main fence line. So in any direction, you have to cross two to five fences to get to the coop. Being inside the main fence also means it's close to the house. I can even see it from my bathroom window. At night, we leave on floodlights that are aimed in the direction of the coop, and that helps to deter predators that way as well. Our coop is made mostly of recycled pallets and pallet wood as siding. On the inside, it's lined with plywood sheathing. There's only one way in or out of the coop, and once the chicken door is closed, the coop is sealed. We have hardware cloth buried underneath it and lining any ventilation holes. We never put food inside the coop and are really on top of keeping it clean. We do also have some outdoor cats, so we pretty much never see rodents. And rodents can attract other predators. Our chickens do have trimmed wings. This is harmless and similar to cutting your fingernails and prevents them from being able to hop most fences. We do have a few that insist on not staying where they should, but for the most part, they stay in the area in front of the coop and the two acre fenced area beyond there. And sometimes a few of them wander into the main yard. We do have a livestock guardian dog who patrols the main yard at night and stays with the chickens during the day. We have not had any predator issues since putting him with the chickens. We chose a Great Pyrenees after some glowing recommendations from friends and others that we talked to. We got him as a puppy and have worked tirelessly to train him with the chickens. He had very limited access to any poultry at first, unless he was supervised, and for a while, only when he was on a leash. But after lots of time spent, we fully trust him with them now and he's done an excellent job at protecting them. So if you have the time to put in, I cannot recommend a livestock guardian dog enough. 
Hopefully you've enjoyed seeing how we protect our flock in different parts of the United States. If you have any questions, be sure to let us know in the comments below. As always, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and click that bell so you're the first to know every time a new video has been released. Thank you so much for watching.